All right, so I've been toying with the idea of doing a video blog for a while now, and I couldn't decide, you know, what my, sorry, thought I was going to burp, <laughs> about what my first topic should be. If I wanted to be funny, serious, or just bullshit. Um, excuse my background. Probably need to repaint my walls. Um... <laughs> And if you hear any noise in the background, I'm sorry about that. One, I got my fan, blow my fan blowing because it's hotter than hell outside. And two, they're working on our roof. Anyways, that's beside the point. So I decided my first video, um, this one is going to be very real. It's going to be very raw. Um, I'm probably going to show a side to a lot of people that watch this video that maybe not everyone has seen. Um... I'll go ahead and admit that I have struggled with the idea of sobriety for a long time. Um, before my grandpa passed away last year, I had about four months of sobriety. And then he passed away, and that hit me pretty hard. And when that hit me hard, I fell off the wagon. And then... Last or two months ago in June, my dad passed away. Um, he wasn't my biological dad, but that doesn't mean anything. He was the only dad that I had. And I think the reason it hurt me the most is because me and him were starting to finally get really close. A lot of people know, and people have pointed out that I put a wall up. Because I'm scared to let people in. I'm scared for people to see the real me. I'm scared for people to see my flaws. I'm afraid that once people realize just how severe my anxiety disorder is, and when they find out about a lot of the mistakes I've made in my past, and I'm always afraid that they're going to run off because so many people in the past have. I've lost a lot of friends because they begin to see, you know how serious, you know, something like anxiety or depression or somebody who, like many people in this world who has suffered from a suicidal past and a self-destructive past, just how real a lot of those emotions can be. Um... So, I guess the reason I'm making this video is because recently I had a conversation with a buddy of mine. And <laughs> he's not the first one that pointed out um, just how I guess the person I would become when I would get inebriated. How aggressive and abrasive I would become. How... I guess you'd say mean I would be. And, you know, like I said, it's been pointed out to me in the past, but for some reason over the past week, I've just been thinking about a lot of those things because, you know, I don't want to be that person. I don't want people to feel like they can't talk to me. Because for so long, I felt like I couldn't talk to other people. I want my friends to feel like they can reach out to me if they need something. I don't want people to feel like they don't know what's going to happen when they're around me. If, you know, I've been drinking. Um, I guess... I guess... Mm, making this video to tell everybody that if I have in any way hurt you, if I have in any way been ugly towards you, you know, my friends, my family, you know, I want to say I'm sorry. This is me being 100% genuine. You know, I don't have some fake-ass background here in my room. I don't have, you know, my freaking Jeffree Star makeup on or anything like that or any makeup on at all because 
It's been kind of a rough day. <laughs> but, yeah, I just wanted to say to everyone that I may have hurt when I was using my drinking to cope with a lot of the pain that I've dealt with when I was using it to cope with a lot of the insecurities that I had. Um, again, you know, I'm sorry. I hope that people can eventually see the real me and that, you know, I do care about my friends. I do love and care about my family. Um, so, you know, maybe it's time for me to <laughs> stop relying on unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with a lot of those things. Um, because, you know, eventually I'll reveal a lot of what I've been through to people, um, not because I want people to feel sorry for me or anything like that. That's not the case. Um, but because I know that there's a lot of people out there that deal with anxiety. They deal with depression. Especially a lot of men, you know, gay or straight. You know, we live in a society where, you know, a lot of men are afraid to talk about their feelings. They're afraid to reach out to their buddies or to, you know, their family because they're afraid that by talking about their emotions or by talking about their anxiety or their depression, that's going to make them seem weak. And it doesn't. Um, you know, I struggled with that too. Because I always felt a little insecure on my, I guess, with my masculinity. Because I was gay. Because, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I was picked on a lot. I was called a sissy. I was called a faggot a lot. Um... I was never one of the boys. You know, when I came out, it wasn't like it is today where there was a lot of support groups, where there was a lot of, you know, resources like the Trevor Project and the HRC and places for, you know, members of the LGBT community to go and to reach out for support. So, you know, a lot of us had to deal with all the harassment, with all the bullying and I wish I could say that it's easy to let all that go but it, it still haunts you you know people that have a suicidal past <clears throat> that still haunts us sometimes in our dreams people who've suffered from substance abuse whether it's alcohol whether it's drugs um people who've suffered from eating disorders or from self-mutilation you know i'll admit you know i used to be a cutter when i was a teenager because i didn't know how else to deal with the pain and the abuse that i saw my mother endure and the you know um verbal abuse that my biological father put us through and it takes time to work through a lot of those things and I guess you can say I never really worked through them. You know, I turned to alcohol to numb a lot of those things. Um, so yeah, um, that's my first time being very, very real with everybody. Um, again, like I said, you know, I'm sorry to you know, my friends, my family, anybody that I may have hurt when I was going through a lot of these things, you know, I love y'all. And I just want y'all to know that, you know, if you're ever going through something, you know, don't, don't be afraid to reach out. And if you're somebody who has a friend that is goes through anxiety or mental illness be there for them don't think that by them reaching out to you that they're being needy all the time because 
I will say personally, sometimes that phone call or that text message or that pop-up visit to their house can save their life. I don't know how many times, you know, I've called some of my friends and the simple fact that they answered and let me vent to them saved my life because I was on the verge of doing something stupid. So, you know, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. And I just want everybody to know that we're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. Um, thank y'all for letting me share. Thank y'all for letting me be vulnerable. Um, I hope I can make this a regular thing. All the videos aren't going to be as serious or as real as this. But um, there are going to be some that are. And then, you know, maybe eventually I can get, you know, like a better background or something. and Or at least find the energy to paint my wall so um i hope everybody has a good day i hope everybody has a good week love y'all